Hi there, in this lesson we're going to talk about some strategies for debugging, which is the practice of fixing the mistakes that may have uh, cropped up in your program. We're going to talk about the three major kinds of errors that you might find in your program, and then we're going to talk about some strategies for fixing each one. So there's three basic kinds of errors that you might come across in your program. Um, the first kind is what we call a syntax error, and that's an error of grammar. That's an error in the way that you've written the language that prevents your program from compiling. Uh, if I was talking to you and I said, my name Roger is, that's a syntax error, because uh, nobody speaks like that. And you need to, similarly, you need to use the correct language in your program or else the compiler can't translate it into machine language. But if you get all the syntax errors fixed and your program is running, then the second kind of error you can encounter is called a runtime error. And that's what we call uh, it when your program crashes, when it just stops working and you get a scary looking error message because something catastrophic has happened, usually something outside of your control, but sometimes something that you can actually fix. And then the last kind, the hardest kind of error to fix, is what we call a logical error. And that's when your program compiles and it runs, but it just doesn't work. And that's really where the debugger is going to come in handy, and we're going to look at how to use that in just a little bit. So as far as syntax errors go, we'll look at an example of one in a minute. Um, read the error message that comes with the syntax error very carefully, because almost always it tells you everything that you need to know in order to fix it. And the other suggestion I have for you is try to fix one syntax error at a time. A lot of times one mistake in your code triggers a whole bunch of syntax errors. And just by making one simple correction, a lot of errors will go away. So fix the first error in your list, and then save and compile again, and then see if you have any more errors to fix. So let's take a look. If we look at JGRASP, um, here I have a program, and I'm going to compile it by hitting the Compile button. And the first thing that you'll notice, unlike the usual happy dialogue saying that the operation was successful, we actually get an error message. Um, you can see down here we have one error. And let's take a look at what that error message tells us, because there's a lot of information here. The first thing that it tells us is the name of the file and the line where it occurs. Now, if you can't tell what line that is, well, two things. One, that JGRASP has helpfully highlighted that line, but if you couldn't tell what the numbers are for the lines in your program, you can click this button here, which turns line numbers on. So line number 11 is this line here. And then the most important part of the error message probably is where it tries to tell you what it thinks the problem is. In this case, it says semicolon expected. And it's even nice enough to put a little caret right here where it thinks the semicolon should go. In this case, it's right. It's not always right. And the error message isn't always even correct. But a lot of times, it's a good suggestion about what the problem is. In this case, if I go up to my editing window, I can see, sure enough, I forgot a semicolon. I'm going to type that semicolon. Once you've fixed that one first error in your list, again, it's time to check and see if everything is OK. So I'm going to hit the Compile button again. That's going to save my program automatically. It's going to compile again. And this time, no errors. The operation is complete. So good. We fixed all the syntax errors in our program. Now let's take a look at the next kind of error. The next kind of error, again, is what we call a runtime error. That's when your program crashes. A couple more suggestions because things are a little more complicated now that things are running. Read the error message carefully. We'll look at the error message uh, in a minute and you'll see it's a little bit different, but there's still a lot of information there. But the most important thing, once you start getting your program running and it doesn't work, is try to reproduce the error. Okay? Errors don't typically just happen by chance. There's usually a fixed set of conditions that makes your program stop working. And the first thing you need to do is to fix or to identify what that condition is. And that takes some careful testing. You should try to make a guess as to what the problem is. Figure out what kind of situation would cause that error. Test it under that specific situation and see if you can reproduce the error every time. Once you can get to that point, then you can start fixing the error. And when you go to fix it, the best suggestion I can make to you is Try to approach it like a scientist would. Once you have a hypothesis for what the problem is, make a guess as to what would probably fix it, and then test that guess. You want to be as systematic as you can about fixing errors. The last thing that you want to do is to just try stuff, because 
you won't know what fixed your problem, and chances are along the way you'll try so many things that you'll make more errors in your program and you won't recognize it. So try one thing, if it doesn't work, take it out. Try something else until you can fix it. Let's take a look at an example of a runtime error. So I've got my program compiled. I'm going to run it now. And this time, since we're in the run IO message um, window, we're going to get our, out, our uh, error message. It looks a lot like a compiler message. Um, it still has the name of the file. It still has the line number, in this case, line number 14, which is highlighted. And it tells us what we think the problem is. So it says here, exception in thread main, divide by a zero. Sure enough, we divided by zero accidentally. We were supposed to calculate the average of the first 10 numbers, so we really wanted this to be a 10. So I'm going to fix that, compile again, run my program. Oh good, it's running. But the bad news is the average of the first 10 numbers is not 5.0, it's 5.5. Uh, and so we now still have a logical error in our program. So let's take a look at how to fix that. As far as logical errors goes, the most important thing, and that's why I've got it in caps, is to use the debugger. Everything else is pretty similar to what we've already talked about. A couple of other tips which might be helpful. You may want to put printout statements in your program to tell you the value of different variables at that point in your program, or to tell you where you are in your program, if the debugger isn't the easiest way to go about it. You also might want to try um, commenting out part of your code that you think might be causing the problem. Remember, if you turn your code into a comment, a comment doesn't actually run. So if you comment out part of your code and your program starts working, chances are somewhere in that code that you just commented out was the problem. So you can try adding it back in one line at a time until your program breaks. And that'll tell you where the problem is. So that's another technique. But the best technique is to use the debugger. So let's do a real quick overview of how the debugger works. The debugger is a part of your um, IDE that allows you to stop your program in the middle of running. And it also allows you to check the value of all the variables in your program. So that's really useful to see what's going on while your program is running. So the first thing you need to know is that the way that you get your program to stop in the middle of running is you have to add what are called breakpoints. Those are like stop signs in your program to tell it where to stop. Uh, and the way to do that is to come over here with your cursor until you see the cursor turn into a little red stop sign and then click the button. Everywhere that you click the button, you will add a breakpoint. If you don't like where a breakpoint is, click again, you'll take it away. So add at least one breakpoint if you're going to use the debugger because otherwise your program won't stop. Once you've got all the breakpoints that you want in your program, then it's time to start the debugger. And that's by pushing the button that looks like a bug. <laughs> Click the button. The debugger starts. You'll notice that our left hand window here has now turned into the debugger pane. And that will show us the value of all the variables in our program. And that might be useful if we can see what's going on. You'll also notice that the program ran right up until the point that it reached the first stop sign and then it stopped. This arrow tells us the place in our program where we are about to run. When I run my program again, it'll start running this line of code. This is the next line of code to run. Up here at the top, you'll see the controls that you're going to need most of the time. These four buttons over here allow you to run your program one line at a time, which is what we're going to do. And this button here, the one that looks like an arrow, um, allows you to skip ahead to the next breakpoint. If I had five breakpoints in my program, it would jump to the second breakpoint after it stopped at the first one. But in our case, we want to go through one line at a time. Let's see what happens. So we've got a variable, it's named sum. Let's see what happens after we add up the first 10 numbers. Well, let's see, sum gets 55. That's good, because the sum of the first 10 numbers is 55. We've also got a variable named average. Average should be equal to 55 divided by 10, so let's see. Well, average equals 5.0. That's not right. 55 divided by 10 is not 5.0. But it turns out in Java, that's where the problem is. Because if you have an integer like 55 and you divide it by another integer like 10, Java treats that as if you were just dividing two integers and throwing away the remainder. So 55 divided by 10 is 5. 
and we don't care about the remainder. But in this case, we do. So the best way to fix that is we're going to take this 10.0, uh, 10, which is an integer, and we're going to turn it into a decimal number by adding 0 0.0. Now we're going to recompile our program again. If you're in the middle of debugging and you try to compile, you get an error message here. You can end the debugger and continue, which is what we want to do here. We're going to recompile our program. Now, if we wanted to, we could run it through the debugger again, but in this case, let's just see what happens. Sometimes you get lucky. We're going to run our program, and it actually works. So, in this lesson, we've looked at the different kinds of errors. We've looked at how to fix syntax errors and runtime errors, and we've also looked at how to use the debugger to add breakpoints to our program, to step through our program one line at a time, and to see what the value of our variables are so that we could know when uh, we've encountered the error in our program. So, good luck. Thank you.